Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Son of a Blitch podcast. I'm your host, George Blitch. Today, we're going to be listening to the Wisdom Keepers radio project. This is a spoken word CD that combines readings and poetry with music from some amazing individuals. The, the voice you hear is Harvey Arden, who was a National Geographic staff writer for 23 years and a best-selling author. Unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but before he did, he sat down in the studio with Chris Colvin and Ben Gordon and recorded many of these readings from Leonard Peltier, from Lakota Wisdom Keeper, Noble Red Man, Leon Shenandoah, The Peacemaker, as well as a host of other folks that he met through his time in the Aboriginal world in Australia when he was working on his book, Dream Keepers. What he did is set these voices and had a host of musicians come in and perform alongside it to put together the Wisdom Keepers Radio musical project, which also won a Native American Music Award for the best radio program. So please enjoy these incredible recordings. This whole project was brought about to give something out to the world for free of priceless information from the indigenous community. Please share this recording worldwide. Look up wisdomkeepersradio.com so that you can be able to see some more information about these individuals who recorded it and whose voices they are from. Share it worldwide. This is free content for you. And Chris uh, assures me that he's working on the Wisdom Keepers Radio Project number two, so that should be coming out in the near future. I um, want to give a shout out to him as he is at the Rage Against the Machine show tonight in Washington, D.C., as well as tomorrow. He'll be manning a booth there to raise awareness of Leonard Peltier, Native American political prisoner who's been wrongfully in prison for almost 47 years for a crime that he did not commit. Um, he is out there to raise awareness with him as well as the band Rage Against the Machine, who's uh, they have been supporters of Leonard's case uh, since they began. And um, we're just trying to get the word out on all these types of messages that we feel are, are very important to, to send out in the world right now. So Chris, thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you for producing, producing this CD. You did an incredible job. I know Harvey is super proud of you and all your work that you've done. And it uh, gives me great joy to introduce to you Wisdom Keepers Radio. Hello, this is Harvey Arden author of the books Wisdom Keepers, Travels in a Stone Canoe, and many others on indigenous wisdom. I'm joining today in reading the words of the Wisdom Keepers with the wonderful folks from the Olmstead here in Tacoma Park. We hope you like the mixture of music and words, words of the Wisdom Keepers. We live by visions. We live by dreams. We live by miracles. The miracles, they come to us in our everyday lives, in our ceremonies, in our prayers. Every day, every day is a miracle to us. Many times I've seen the eagle come out of the empty sky and circle over our heads when we blow the eagle bone whistle. The eagle, he's the witness of the great spirit of Wakantanka. The eagle, he's the eyes of God. Once I had an eagle dream. I left my bed and I flew with the eagle out below the sun and above the clouds. And after we circled around up there ten times, I flew back down to my bed and the eagle, the eagle, he came down with me. And he flew around my head four more times and then he flew away. Now, however, whenever the eagle joins us in our ceremony, I always say a friendly hello to him. He nods and remembers me, and I remember him. We keep an eye out for each other. The eagle is my symbol. 
In our way, you always have a symbol. That's your power. It reminds you of God. It reminds you to do good. Some missionaries came to one of our ceremonies one day. They watched us while we danced. I, I told them, everybody, look up in the sky. See there, the eagle. The eagle's come to join us. And sure enough, the eagle came right over and flew down into our ceremony. He stood there on one foot, with one leg up in the air. He carried two feathers in his claw, and he put them on his head like a crown. And then he started dancing. And we, we danced with him. We all cried to see the eagle dance with us. Even the missionaries cried. We can't believe it, they said. It can't be happening. But it happened. God, Kantanka, Tunkashala, came down and danced with us. land I'll not lead nor you creator will show us the way side by side we'll walk just we two yes you and me you'll see you'll see with visionary eyes you will see so don't be shy dear friend take my hand and let us make our visit now the spirits come, Creator sent, as we too are Creator sent, if we but knew. Look there, a hawk! She flies before our eyes, a red-tailed miracle. She flies within us too, you know. Use your inner eyes to see. I see, I want you to see, so that what you see, your children will be able to see, and with visionary eyes, they will see.
there is a path. And there are original instructions for following that path. Everything's laid out for you. Your path, straight ahead of you. Sometimes it's invisible, but it's there. You may not know where it's going, but still, you've got to follow that path. It's the path to the Creator. It's the only path worth following. Everyone's got to find the right path. You can't see it, so it's hard to find. No one can show you. Each person's got to find that path by him or herself. There's no point in walking anyone else's path. That'll only get you nowhere. There's a special path we follow. They say among the Aborigines of Australia. We call it a song line or a story line. The songs and stories tell us where to move along that line, that path. Those are the only safe places to go. They're paths for travelers and for messengers too. They're tracks. The Wanjana, our creator made for us to follow. You're going one of two ways. Either you're on the spiritual path or you're on the material path. It's your choice. Your choice only which of those two you follow. Where is the path? The path is under your feet. Where's the gate to that path? The gate is where you are right this moment. You don't have to explain why you're here. I know why you're here. White man forgot his original instructions. That's why you're here. We Indians, we've never forgotten our instructions. Our instructions are very simple. To respect the earth respect each other, to respect ourselves, to respect all life itself. That's our first commandment. That's the first line of our gospel. Instructions just come when you've lost hope and you don't know which way to go. That's when you find out what your instructions are and which path to take. It's our duty to survive as a people. That's part of God's instructions to us, to survive. You can't live someone else's instructions. You've got to live your own. Some of God's instructions are for all of us. They're the original instructions on being human. They're for everyone, even you guys. The material life is not worth living. It's the spiritual life that makes us human. Pick a road. <laughs> Pick any road and follow it. Follow it to the rest of your life. No expectations, just possibilities. When you're leaving, I believe in another world. 
better world? I believe in many worlds. As many worlds as there are places to put them in all of Creator's creation. Creation is much, much, much bigger than we think. It's so big. The whole sky full of stars is just a tiny part of it. Creation's not just out there. It's here inside of ourselves, too. Each of us is a universe. Every molecule, every atom in the universe is a world with still many other worlds inside of it. That's how creation is. It's so big in so many ways you and I can't even dream of it. We're all essential to creation, each and every one of us. Be a sharer. Be a giver. Be a helper and the whole of creation opens up around you and over you like an umbrella tree. All of creation is like an umbrella tree we live under, really inside of, because we ourselves are part of that umbrella tree. That's the most wonderful thing of all, that we ourselves, even our selfish little selves, are part of that world, of that creation, of that umbrella tree, of that mystery. That's the greatest thing of all, even if we get our whole lives and never even know it or realize what's so. Whatever this great holy mystery is, we, each and every one of us, are part of it. Be thankful for that. Stop asking for little things. Just be grateful for that big thing. So send out a big thanks to creation for making you part of itself. I'm spellbound when my eyes capture the height of a mountain. I wonder, would my dreams reach so high? If I could challenge the towering mountain and look down into the valley below, would, would I be satisfied with the green pastures? When I follow a cool, winding brook, I often ask, just where does it end? And I wonder, how far in life could I go? I sit and listen to the lapping of the sea, now peaceful, now angry, like my heart within. On the beach, I find a shell and I put it to my ear, and within I hear the roar of the whole ocean and the roar of my own heart. I look down at my moccasins. What do I see? They don't seem to match. How can this be? I have good woven moccasins, but... They don't seem to fit. Why is it one so far behind, always out of step in the wrong direction? One goes east, one goes west. What must I do to get in step? Let me run. Let me escape. Let me free my inner self. I'll wear my moccasins with pride and dance as one with the drumbeat. Two mismatched moccasins, two mismatched selves, and all become one in the dance of life.
in the shadowed night, sometimes I become spirit. The walls, the bars, the gratings of this prison dissolve into light, and I unloose my soul, and I fly through the inner darkness of my own being. I become transparent. I become a bright shadow. I become a bird of dreams singing from the tree of life. Call the Wakantanka any name you like. In English, they call him God or the Great Spirit. He's the Great Mystery. He's the Great Mysterious. That's what Wakantanka really means. The Great Mysterious. You can't define him. He's not actually a he or a she, a him or a her. We have to use those kinds of words. Because you just can't say it. God is never an it. So call the Kantanka whatever you like. But be sure to call him. He wants to talk to you. What's important is beyond understanding. That's the first thing you must understand. Everything's a mystery. Once it stops being a mystery, it stops being true. spoken by the peacemaker founder of the Iroquois Confederacy about 1000 AD. Think not forever of yourselves, O chiefs. Nor of your own generation. Think of continuing generations of our families. Think of our grandchildren and of those yet unborn whose faces are coming from beneath the ground. Think. 
think of continuing generation. Think of our grandchildren and of those yet unborn. Think not forever of yourselves. Hi, this is Harvey Arden again. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you're as enriched with these words and this music as we are. It's been a pleasure and an honor to read these words with the Olmsteaders. So I hope you're as enriched as we are by this music, by these words, these words of the ancient ones, the wisdom keepers, from all over the U.S. and Canada, and we even have some from Australia. We wish you oneness with ourselves and the universe. Thank you. Bye-bye.